Dear listeners and viewers, those of you who managed to view that will have just been witness to some amazing drone footage of Palestinian murals in, of all places, a huge international wall in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And with that, I'd like to introduce this very special segment today. You know, we've been uh, highlighting aspects of Palestinian culture throughout my guest hosting shows on Salam Media, including the literature, the visual art, um, the food, uh, the kafia, etc. And today we really want to focus on a, a form of art, the murals for Palestine, the murals for Gaza. Many of you will be familiar with one of my guests today. That's Obedullah Khirdin. He's a nurse and a founder or a driving force behind the murals for Gaza, uh, particularly in the Western Cape, which has gotten many of the communities in the Western Cape um, fired up to contribute to these murals, including on the Cape Flats in some of the most gang-ridden areas of, of Cape Town. Uh, but also, of course, the iconic, huge Palestinian flag in the Buakha. And my second guest today is Professor Bull Ralston, and he is Emeritus Professor in Sociology at Ulster University in Northern Ireland and a former director of the Transitional Justice Institute. But his research and writing about Palestinian, about political murals, sorry, uh, spans 40 years. And the results of his work include volumes of photos of Republican and loyalist mur murals in Northern Ireland, all titled Drawing Support. He has written about political murals in the Basque country, in Chile, in Colombia, in Gaza, Iran, and Sardinia. So I'm very, very pleased to welcome you both to the Salam Media Studio, Professor Bill Ralston and Obedullah Khirdin. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Very pleased to be here. Uh, Wa alaikum salam. It is a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much, both of you. Professor Ralston, since we've just seen that amazing drone footage, I'm going to begin with you. Why Palestinian murals in Northern Ireland? Where did this idea come from? Okay, there's a short answer, there's a long answer. I'd like to go into the long answer at some point, which is a long history of support for Palestine from Ireland. But maybe if I just jump to the more recent uh, experience, which is footage relates to. Uh, after October uh, 27th, there was a lot of support in areas of, in Belfast and other parts of Northern Ireland, especially Republican areas, support for Gaza, given the increasing and brutal attack by the IDF on the whole area. And people wanted to do things, so they they have raised money for, for Palestinian uh, medical relief. They have gone on marches. They have staged pickets. And one of the ideas was to paint murals. So some of the muralists were thinking about how to do that when I was contacted coincidentally by a woman from Ramallah who had been in Belfast and had seen the international support murals in Belfast. We discussed a way that we could collaborate and the idea emerged that she would gather together images from Palestinian artists, mm -hmm. send them to Belfast, and they would be reproduced on the wall, the big wall in Belfast. So everybody jumped for that idea because what was at the core of it was, this was not just what we in Belfast, in the West, think of Palestine. This is what Palestinians experiencing what's happening think and say about Palestine. So we merely became a conduit for their artwork on the walls. 
And that's a very, very powerful thing. You're reproducing the artwork of Palestinian artists in uh, Northern Ireland. And of course, Ireland has, as you said, had a long history of, of uh, supporting the Palestinian struggle. Indeed, in this recent uh, and ongoing genocide in Gaza and the ethnic cleansing in the West Bank, uh, Irish politicians, Irish leaders have been amongst the very few in Western Europe who have voiced any support uh, at a state level for uh, the Palestinian cause. And we do thank you for that. Obedullah, I'd like to bring you in here. You're a professional nurse. Why murals for Gaza? Uh, why murals for Gaza? Like the saying goes, I mean, I've been a professional nurse for about now five years and I've worked in various emergency rooms around the Western Cape. And after I saw the image of a girl whose entire face uh, was covered in white phosphorus, it broke me into tears because I have never seen an injury like that. And in that moment, I felt completely helpless. And I worked with my mother and we took the saying, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, quite literally. And one week after seeing that horrific image, we took to the streets of, of Buka and we painted our first mural at six o'clock in the morning at Rose Corner Cafe and it didn't stop from there. It's for me uh, a way of waging war. Uh, we are artivists, uh, we art and activism meet. meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's absolutely wonderful. And as you say, you haven't stopped. So you've gone from painting uh, the the first mural on the corner on the wall of Rose Cafe. You've gone to this enormous Palestinian flag. I was there in December for the uh, Math Zikr um, program, which was quite amazing in its electrifying impact on the city. I think, uh, but also you've now more recently also mobilized communities and some of them very very disadvantaged communities violence ridden communities themselves mm -hmm. on the cape flats places like heidefeld to actually paint murals as well uh, was that an initiative that came from the community or did you approach the community uh, well it was an initiative from both sides when we started murals for gaza it wasn't just for buka i mean we came with the, with the saying that from every corner, from every angle, and from every post, if you do come to the Western Cape, you are for Palestine. So mm -hmm. we, take it, we take it quite personally. Uh, we are here to spread awareness. We are here to also show the relationship and struggle that the people of Cape Town, the people of Buka also face, and the similarities of what the Palestinians are facing, but on a much, much more horrific uh, and bloodshed level. And some of those those beautiful images are up on the screens right now. Right now, we have that image of, of two hands being clasped, both from prisoners in, in each country. Quite a powerful visual symbol there. We also saw one earlier on with the, the, the now very iconic watermelon symbol, which harks back to the time when the Palestinian flag was banned in 1993. Uh, in, in the West Bank, in Gaza, it was banned in the occupied territories. And so Palestinian turned to the watermelon limb as a metaphor for their flag because it has the same colors. Um, well, with regard to actually getting Palestinian artists involved and reproducing their work on the international wall, as I said earlier, that's, that's really a powerful conduit for the expression of Palestinians themselves. And the impact of that must have been quite incredible in a what is still a Western European city to have these, these huge images go up. What has the response of the Irish public been? Mm. Um, can, can, I, can I go at that answer a little bit roundabout? Uh, sure. if you don't mind you see the image that's on screen now of the soldier and the, and the, the dead children yes that, that replaced the mural because there were murals all along this wall which were painted out for these murals to go up on that spot that exact spot was a mural about an incident 50 years ago in this area of belfast where british soldiers shot dead five people on the street and the, the local people are still demanding 
an inquest. Well, the inquest is currently finally happening and they're looking for justice in relation to it. So uh, it's not an unfamiliar scene, even if it's not about their country, number one. Number two, you mentioned that uh, there was a good state support from, from Ireland in relation to Palestine. I, I wish there was more, but that's maybe another question. But the point is, there's good popular support because there's, I don't want to exaggerate, but there, there, there is a collective memory uh, in the Irish people of what history has done to them. And when they see what is currently being done to other people, it resonates absolutely easily with them. Let me give you just one example. Famine has often been used as a method of war and counterinsurgency by the British in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Two quick examples. Number one, in the, seventh, in the 17th century, Cromwell, in three years in Ireland with an army, starved to death 20% of the Irish population. In the mid-19th century, a famine that was overlooked by, by British authorities who did almost nothing to intervene led to the death or emigration of over half the Irish population. Mm -hmm. So when, when local people in these areas look at what's happening with starvation as a method of war in Gaza, you don't need to explain it to them. It, mm -hmm. It's almost there in the DNA that they know what this means. They know what that suffering means. So seeing these murals is a very, very powerful visualization of what they feel and know already. Given that the, the, the support for the murals, the support for, for us as we painted the murals was spectacular. People beeping horns as they went by, people coming up and giving us cups of coffee or saying, look, there's some extra lunch over at this community centre. Why don't you come and finish it? So on and so on and so on. It, it's been very popular. Remarkable. Uh, that, that point about the intergenerational memory of the Irish, uh, you know, harking back both to the 19th century when, as you said, so many were starved to death and so many emigrated mainly to the U.S., but also the, in, the, the linkage with the intergenerational memories of the Palestinians as well, uh, harking back to the Nakba and even further back in history to, to colonization as, as far back as the Crusades even. Um, it's, I think, that intergenerationality and, and the memory that has passed on, and in some respects, even the trauma that is passed on, is an incredibly powerful thing and creates these types of linkages between seemingly unrelated peoples. The, the, common, the common thread is colonialism. Absolutely. That image up on screen at the moment uh, th that we've just had, you know, of the woman heating up or, or cooking a pot of food over the fire outside a refugee camp. It is a scene that must be familiar to refugees around the world, not only Palestinians, I would think. And um, can you tell us, can you give us any information about the artist and about, um, you know, where this particular uh, visual we, came from? We, we the, the friend in Ramallah, uh, Rana Hamida, Humeda, she uh -huh. sent us maybe 40 images and people right. just picked whatever one they want. As it happens, the most powerful ones uh, tended to be from this one artist called Saeed Hassan, mm -hmm. who's based in the West Bank. They occupied West Bank rather than Gaza. And three of the murals on the wall, this one, the one of the soldiers and another one, were by him. It was just it was just coincidence. I don't know much about him. He does have an Instagram account. I don't do Instagram because I'm too old fashioned. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I can't learn new things anymore. But uh, yeah, Said Hassan is his name. Thank you. And anybody who wants to go and look up Said Hassan, visual artist in the West Bank, can do so. That's one of his images up on screen there. Thank you very much for that, Bill. I'll certainly be looking him up because this is one of the images that haunted me from the time I saw the visuals you sent. Uh, Obedala, coming back to you. What has the response of the community in Cape Town been? And I, I mean not only the community who chipped in to help um, paint those murals, but also the greater Cape Town community. Have you perhaps had pushback from South African Zionists? I know you've had some very famous visitors and celebrities come along there. Uh, do you want to talk to us a little bit around that, please? 
Uh, yes. So when we started Murals for Gaza, it was a form of liberation. Uh, it broke a lot of barriers between uh, our local metropolitan police as well as members of the community. It highlighted uh, that we were maybe experiencing some passive forms of oppression uh, mm -hmm. uh, that were dealt to us by our local uh, uh, city. And through, like I said, I mean, Palestine has freed the world. And we at Murals for Gaza appreciated that the liberation of just doing these murals. When we come out into a community, we are invited and we are completely cared for. Uh, we've got women on the streets that are sitting outside just to make sure we are in the step. Uh, we've got uncles and aunties that are, uh, you know, you name it, and they'll get it for us. So they make our job extremely easy. And, I mean, the communities don't stop. I mean, we've covered about over six communities so far in the past six months that Murals for Gaza has been founded, uh, producing over 200 murals in the Western Cape alone and growing. Okay, hey, mashallah, that's wonderful. So great to hear about the community support in both Ireland and uh, in, in the Western Cape. And kudos to you both and to the communities that supported you. Obedullah, in terms of pushback from Zionists, uh, you've said that there were a few confrontations or some perhaps aggression, maybe passive aggression from the police. But in terms of, um, you know, negative consequences, any and then just maybe a quick roundup of, of who the, the famous people who have been who have come to see your murals. Uh, so we haven't had any um, outright confrontation with any Zionist supporters, alhamdulillah. I mean, it would be very difficult. I mean, you would have to pick which mural to choose from. Who <laughs> up alone? Buka alone has a high concentration of about 69 murals uh, wow. Palestinian in the world. Yes, so it has a very high concentration. Uh, for the famous people to come and see it, we've had Naledi Pando, who has come to tour our murals. We've had Mansoor Shoman to see us in action, as well as sign our latest mural. Mm -hmm. It was a great, great pleasure to have him. Uh, we've had uh, J.P. Smith come and pay on, uh, our murals a visit, as well as the mayor of the Western Cape. Uh, to come and see and what we're doing. So we really appreciate all eyes because it gives us a more awareness. And what Absolutely. we're pushing now for, what we're pushing now for our latest mural is uh, the all eyes on Rafa, which is what we have, which is what is currently happening. So the more exposure that we get, we use it in a state to amplify and spread our awareness so that from every corner, from every angle, if you do come to the Western Cape, you are for Palestine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's that's ac actually amazing work. The fact that you are amplifying what's currently going on in Gaza, that, you know, all nearly all the inha inhabitants of Gaza are now uh, in, in a densely, densely populated part uh, in Rafa in the south and that there is uh, talk of a ground invasion there now uh, in Rafa and an and active military invasion in, in Rafa that is given what we've seen of this genocide over the past six months, a hugely scary thought. Um, and, and I think will be heartbreaking if it does happen. We've seen children plea, you know, send out pleas to people like uh, US President Joe Biden and the UN to please, please don't let Israel invade Ga uh, Rafa. So the more awareness around that, the more implication, amplification we have around that, the better, as you've said. And of course, it's not just about being a tourist attraction, but about amplifying the voices of the currently largely voiceless in Gaza, unfortunately, largely voiceless, but hopefully there will be some resolution soon. Um, we don't have too much time left, so I'm going to I'll come to each of you for a few last words, and then we're going to play out with a clip of the um, murals in the Western Cape, and I think also some in Liege in Belgium. So mm. it's not just Northern Ireland, but also this fantastic set of steps in Belgium as well. And it's wonderful to see that kind of really huge in your face visual support for the Palestinian cause. Bill, some last thoughts from you on this one, please. Yeah, I suppose if, if you didn't think about it much, you would sort of say, what's the point of painting a mural on a wall anywhere? What, what does this do for, for people who are going through what they're going through in Gaza? 
and, and I think there are, there are a couple of levels where it makes sense. Number one, it makes sense to the community doing it because I don't know how many people I've come across to say how helpless they feel watching this footage night after night of the, of the brutality that's going on in Gaza. It's a very little thing to do, but at least to say, yes, we got together and we did something that spoke out about that. That's important for us. But that's only a very small thing compared to the message that it sends out to the world. And okay, if it's only one town with murals, that's a small message. But if it's Ireland, if it's Belgium, if it's South Africa, some friends of mine in Portugal have started painting some of the murals that we've done also on the wall on the walls there. It's Fantastic. part of a global, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of the cultural wing of a global protest that says enough is much more than enough. Absolutely. I, I, I love that, the cultural wing of a global protest. And particularly, you know, the use of the visuals by Palestinian artists, because I think in many parts of the world, Palestinians have become so dehumanized that when we associate the word Palestinian, many people around the world associate that word Palestinian with violence, with terror, with Islamic jihad, uh, you know, and we don't often reflect on the fact that Palestinians are nurses, doctors, professors, visual artists, writers, parents, sisters, children. So it's a really good way of rehumanizing that in a very in-your-face way. And I don't think it's small at all, Bill. We are can going I, to come to you. Can I say uh, one last sentence? Can I sure, please, please one go last ahead. Sentence? I Absolutely. just like to say, to say directly, directly to Abedola, if you come to Belfast, we'll find you a wall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if you come to Cape Town, I'm sure uh, Obedullah will find you a wall. I'm, sh I'm sure we can find you one here in Johannesburg as well. Definitely. So we're going to now uh, go, we're going to play out with, um, with some videos, as I said. But before we do that, Obedullah, some last uh, thoughts from you. Uh, I'm just really glad, grateful that Noodles for Gaza has taken off the position that it has. I mean, the organization itself has liberated so many, so many artists and has opened up so many doors. Uh, we're eternally grateful to the people of Gaza for giving us the inspiration to do this. Uh, we will never stop. And it, it just continues the fact that, you know, what we're doing is making an impact. And uh, our big mural is the biggest one in the world, and we're very proud of it. And that mural protects uh, every single mural that we put up. Uh, it's just a powerful, powerful statement, a signal within its own right to rally for what is right. Absolutely. Please stay with us. We're going to play these videos and hopefully we'll be able to come back just to say goodbye. So we've got you a video also of uh, your poem, Obedullah, and I believe we're going to that one next. Okay. <laughs> When will it be enough for you to act? Is it not enough to see us getting shot in the back? What will it take for you to make this your fight? Do our lives not have value just because we're not white? You say both sides as if it justifies looking away in the face of our genocide. Why is your comfort more important to you than our lives? You call us terrorists, rapists, killers, and savages, yet we're the ones suffering at the hand of your damages. You see our brown skin and decide we have no worth when our skin color reflects the bounty of earth. Born of the same world and of the same God, our hearts remain true and warm while we wait for yours to be thawed. For it can only be a heart frozen and hard that sees our babies dying, our people marred by bombing, destruction, overcome by fear, and you stand there stoic, shedding nary a tear. I don't pray for revenge. It's not our nature to be hateful. I pray for you to soften, heal, and be grateful for the differences we have and similarities we share. I pray for a future in which everyone cares. Beautiful. 
Okay, that was really, really beautiful. Thank you, Obedullah. And um, we're going to finish off the segment now with the other video. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you again to you both. Shukran Jazeel and Jazakallah Khair. I don't know how to say thank you in Irish, but thank you to you as well. But what both of you are doing is incredible in amplifying Palestinian voices and shedding light on the current situation. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. It's only a pleasure. Shukran Jazeelan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning and goodbye. Goodbye. And we're going to play you we're going to play you out with another video inshallah. <laughs>